Good morning. My name is Vincent Lynch and I'm your seminar leader for today. Now we're going to be talking about a very sensitive issue today. The issue of sexual harassment in the working environment. And I know that some people may get offended or upset or embarrassed uh, by this subject matter. But I really believe that I need to say, say it as it is and talk to you straight about sexual harassment. Therefore, let me assure you up front that I have no intent to annoy anyone or upset anyone. I'm simply here to do a presentation about sexual harassment for training and instructional purposes. Now, if I were to ask you, what is sexual harassment? Would you have an idea of what it is? Would you be very clear as to what sexual harassment is? If I were to ask you, how does sexual harassment impact on the work environment? Would you have any idea how that would impact? If you're an employer, an owner of a company, a supervisor, or an employee, all of those people in those various roles, need to know exactly what they should do in the event they are involved in a sexual harassment incident, whether it be the claimant or the defendant or the owner, manager, or supervisor. There are specific roles that each of those individuals should play in order to protect their own interests as well as the interests of their employer. Okay, now let's move forward. And I'm just going to pose to you another question, rhetorically. What would happen if, in fact, there was an explosive that went off in this room? A dynamite, stick of dynamite, bomb, whatever. What would be the result of that? If you could just use your imagination a bit, you're probably thinking that everything would be out of, out of order. Everything would be in disarray. You wouldn't know where to find your paper clips. You wouldn't be know how to know where to find your 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 stapler. And if it's a big bomb, you might find your desk across the room. If that is the case, then obviously the work environment has been severely impacted. That is what happens in sexual harassment. Although it is not physical. It's all a result of the anxiety, the stress, the, the, the fearfulness, the distrust that develops from sexual harassment. So now let's talk about the employee first. Let's assume that an employee feels that they have been sexually harassed. What should that employee do? Okay, well, let's talk about that. The first thing an employee should do, if they believe that they have been sexual harassed, is to report that incident to their supervisor. And that is, it, and the, the employer from that point has the obligation to move forward and rectify that situation to the satisfaction of the person who believes that they have been harassed. Now, let's assume that the individual who was harassed um, well, let's back up. Let's assume that that a person did, someone did in fact harass a person. What is that person's role? How will they fit into the picture? Well, obviously, there should be an immediate investigation involving the claimant, involving the person who allegedly harassed this individual, and a very, very detailed investigation so that the truth of the matter will come out. Now I must tell you a problem. All sexual harassment claims, or any claim for that matter, don't always present or result in the consequences that may have appeared to have been the case initially. You don't, all, you don't always get all the information that you might need to take a particular position on the issue. But as an employer, as a supervisor, it is your responsibility to take control of that situation 
and to ensure that your employer is not adversely impacted because of it. Now let's assume that you are the employer. You actually own the company. What is your best what is your best scenario in this situation? How are you to ensure that your company will not be as adversely impacted because of a sexual harassment charge? Well, the first thing you need to do as an employer is ensure that your employees are informed about sexual harassment. Not just your hourly employees, but also your supervisor. As a matter of fact, your supervisor plays an extremely important role in resolving these issues. As you know, supervisors are the people who deal with the four issues. They're the first ones who know about the problems. If you're a good supervisor, you're going to take the action to start the correction of that problem in process. So your supervisors need to be trained. You need to have a policy, a clearly stated policy, which in fact defines what sexual harassment is so that everyone has a clear understanding as to when they may be involved in an incident or a situation that can be interpreted as sexual harassment. So, also as the employer, you need to publish your policy. There are several ways of doing that. The best way, in my opinion, is to put it in an employee handbook, ensure, ensure that the employees have reviewed it and signed off on it. That's a good start. In addition to that, it's important that you post the policy throughout your work environment so that all employees, supervisors, managers, corporate executives, all of those individuals, in fact, have had an opportunity to see a written policy. Now, the last thing is so important for employers. If you have a policy, you must enforce that policy. You must enforce it. If you have a policy and you're, you're being uh, a little bit flimsy about actually enforcing it uh, uh, in an even-handed way across the board for all people, then of course you're going to run into problems if you find yourself in a legal situation. I have just briefly touched on sexual harassment today, but there will be other opportunities to get more in detail. I would have, I would request that each of you come to me and I will talk more about those various areas that are important for you as an employer, as an employee, and as a supervisor on the floor who has really the brunt of solving the issue. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.